<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing. And Pooch, he's down there, he's chilling. It's a chill out kind of day. I've got a small job, which is nice. The small ones are a little more laid back. One can kind of just ease his way through the process and not have to deal with a whole lot of fuss and muss juggling parts. Yeah, da, 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 da. I would have used two hands there, but the phone would have actually been juggling. And I can't juggle. <laughs> Alright, guys. And pooch. Oh, yeah. Shake a bar. Good boy. Good boy. You coming up? You coming up for some love? Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. Big hugs. Mm. Gotta love your pooch. <laughs> More sneezes than kisses on that one. Oh, yeah, shoulder. Yeah, big hugs. All right. All right, down, boy. Kind of. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, oh, somebody still wants to play. Somebody still wants to play. He's going to chase me around. Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> yep. Aw. Oh. Yeah, I know. I loves ya too. I loves ya too. Oh, <laughs> coming all the way up again. Oh, big stretch. Pause in the chest. All right. Well, we'll just do this together then. So today, <laughs> so today, guys, if you can see in the background, we got a helmet. We're gonna tackle skulls, <laughs> skulls, skulls, and more skulls. <laughs> That's just it. A little beanie. We'll do the 360. Oh, yeah. Got to keep that on there, guys. You know, the popo. They like to see those things. But we're going to have some fun with that label, too. It's all about having fun. This is all fun all the time, guys. You know what we do. <laughs> all right. So before I get into this and tackle it, I'm going to kind of give you guys the rundown. Um... I'm gonna flip you around here, give you a better view. What do you think? Yeah, that's right. You can't respond until like way later. All right. So, voice things voiced. We start with the design. So, he came into my studio and gave me a lot of freedom. Um, gave me a couple terms like evil, menacing skull. I wrote evil, and he's like, no, no, Ryan. Your most evil skull. <laughs> so I started doing some quick sketches of the lid. We started writing down he wants blood going up and down this dude. Well, that's kind of my idea. I'm going to take credit for that one. Um, he's got some lettering he wants on the side. I'm going to wrap it on this side. And then we're going to have some blood from this skull dripping onto the DOT logo. Um, with the Viacon Dios on the side here, all done in blood. And this is the back, so this is what you see when you're coming up on him. And this is going to be the front, and it's going to be virtually the same dude, with the blood kind of going over and crossing from one to the other, kind of a neat little effect. And, uh, yeah, he gave me some other, you know, lost souls in the background, so we got some other skulls that are going to be kind of grace in the background of this thing. Screaming, scared, I think I was going to write something else there and then didn't, but that's what we're going to do. Um, gray tones, dark. <laughs> all right. So that's all the information I got for this project with some quick sketches to make sure that he knew and I knew that we were both on the same page. Oh, yeah. And don't worry about that stuff, guys. That's just his information and mine. Y'all don't need any of that. And from this, guys, I start doing some drawing. Hello, my name is Ryan, and I like to do drawings. Alright, that's enough of that. So, check it out. Evil. Most evil. Yeah, he's pretty gnarly. And then this was some sketches for our lost souls in the background. Ba bam From there, guys. Oh, and some lettering. This is right. So, drafted the lettering, photocopied it down to the size I want. This one's going to be all done with a brush. This one's going to be masked and cut. Cool. Cool. All right, and then some stencils. So I took a few of these skulls. Some of them are going to be in the background. Some of them aren't going to have that much detail. 
but I took a couple of them and added some uh, quick stencils just so that I knew what was going on with a couple of the more predominant background dudes. Uh, there's not much going on with a lot of their lower jaws. So that's one sheet. And then here's another. Pretty straightforward, I think. Some quick skulls. This guy ain't much to him. Yeah, he lost the whole top of his cranium. Sorry, it happens when you're dealing with menacing, evil, protagonistic skulls like this guy. So this is going to be my blood stencil for the front of this helmet. And here is the boss man. So he's going to go on there something like that. Not gonna worry much about the teeth, more about those eyes, those menacing, blood drenched eyes. Mwahaha. And then for the rear of this, guys, this is where we get that DOT. And for that, we've got this guy. Where is she be? So he's gonna kind of work something like. So, on a nice little angle, a little different, lower jaw will get in there as well. What do you guys think? I think we need to get some work done and stop talking about this little ditty. And in order to get some work done, <laughs> let's keep talking. All right, I've got some tools, guys. I got masking tape, paper towel. I got a whole roll of it. Should I need it? Um, cutting board, ruler. I've got my little uh, brush cleaner. That's just where I clean my paint brushes. Got detail brushes. And I've got mixing brushes, lights and darks. I've got a pencil, exacto knife, pen, water, soluble pencil for doing some lettering. Q-tips. And my colors for today, guys, which should be fairly straightforward. I've got black and white for mapping out. I've got it condensed, my white thinned out in an eyedropper bottle. Not so for my black, but that's a little good. And uh, I've got my blue, purple, brown mixture all mixed up and thinned out in a handy little bottle. And some candy reds, which is my urethanes, but man, that's going to give me some really cool blood effect. I'm thinking about possibly using some silver pearl. In the background, I've got a lot of freedom on this one that I haven't decided yet, but we'll get there, guys. We will get there. Let's start with this bad boy right here. And as any good painter will tell you, prepping is half the battle, so I'm just giving it a quick cleaning with my fantastic solution. And I should mention here, guys, that this helmet was sent out to the body shop. There it was primed, base black, clear coated. Wet sanded was 600 and then brought back to me for the artwork and it will go back to the body shop for final clears. And here I'm just loosely masking out that DOT to save it. And now we can start with laying in our first stencil, guys. And what I like to do is just rip little chunks of tape, roll them back upon themselves, and then use it as a little double-sided sticky, much as you see right there. And then uh, I just lay down the first initial positive so I get a layout of it now I'm doing the negative so I can spray on a nice layer of transparent white guys this is thinned out pretty extreme I'm gonna say over 50 50 and um again guys I'm not here building it up real bright I just want some nice definition for the teeth and some nice definition for the jaw lines so on and so have you <laughs> and uh this is how i do i build it up nice and slow keeping in mind guys for something like this there is no reference i kind of have an idea in my head of what this skull is going to look like but i know i'm going to want this guy punched way into the background way into the darkness so i'm building it all up knowing that I'm going to knock it all back down. So again, not going in with a real extreme white because that would be a pain in the butt to try to bring back down later. This is just giving me some form. Easy breezy. And then I'll go in with some black. 
Blacker than the black hole left in my soul when I found out they cancelled Rick and Morty. <laughs> and it's thinned out, guys. Uh, I'm still going to get a bit of a speckle pattern. It seems to be the case with blacks. But I've got it thinned out so I can get in there and lay these stencil lines in there. And again, it's not crazy black unless I build it up multiple layers so I can go over some of these areas once or twice and it just maps it out real nice. Or I can go back in the areas like the eyes and the nose and just build those up in multiple layers and get it nice and dark. But that's it guys. That maps out my upper portion of the skull, the cranium, and now the lower jaw. Nothing too crazy. So now on to the big dude. Now we're going to tackle this guy a little differently because he's so huge. He was pretty much a full sheet of paper. As you can probably see, we're missing a chunk of his cranium. So I'm just going in with black, and again, nice light black, thinned out, and I'm just quickly spraying in the darker areas, and this allows me to map it out quickly, so that now I can go in with my outside stencil, what I like to call the negative, and just give me some outlines. Skulls are fairly symmetrical, so flip her over, and... Just to reiterate myself, guys, I am going to be knocking this back into the darkness. A lot of this stuff is going to be lost. So I don't want to spend too much time building it up nice and bright, only to lose it all in the future. But I do need to map it out. So this is what I'm doing here, guys. Mapping it all out. Nice and light, transparent layers. And uh, moving on to the little skulls here, I've got a few of them to do, so we're going to try to do this relatively quickly. I'll show you guys a couple in real time. There's no real uh, <laughs> right or wrong here, just get some white in, a little bit brighter to the areas where you need it, typically the front of the face, and let it fade to the back of the skulls. Some guys you might want to build up nice and bright. Other guys you might want to keep a little a little darker. Keeps them a little further in the background. But uh, again, just mapping it out. So that can all be worked out in the future. And there is no real game plan for this helmet. It's a little haphazard at this stage. Just kicking in these skulls as quick as possible. This in itself <laughs> has its own limitations and problems, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, but for now, here we are going back in with black just to chisel out the eye sockets, the nose sockets, a little bit of the cheekbones on these little skulls. And this is the same brush, guys, with the same black, so it's thinned out. I'm going to say at about a 3 to 1 ratio, guys. So three drops of my fantastic thinning slash cleaning solution. And one drop black. I'm using multiple drops black, multiple drops of thinners. And I rarely ever fill my cup more than a third. And it really is one of those things, guys, where the longer you keep the paint in your brush, the more drops of thinner you're going to have to add that does tend to dry up the longer you leave it. And this is why it's really hard to give ratios, guys. And I know a lot of you guys ask, and I know it's, it's kind of hard. There is no real ratio that I use because it's constantly changing depending on how long that paint is in my brush. And sometimes I'll mix it up and I'll be like, yeah, that's working great right now. But now for the next step, I wanted a little thicker, so I add a little bit of paint. And I'm not keeping track of where it was. And then I'm like, eat too thick, maybe a little bit of thinners. And again, you're getting so many drops and so many different variations. Keeping track becomes, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't got that kind of uh, brain capacity, unfortunately. And with these bigger stencils, guys, you'll notice I'm spraying it 
section by section. I'm not trying to tackle this whole thing at once. I've actually broken it up into four quarters. Now that's a ratio you can take to the bank. <laughs> and just sort of painted it in four sections. The upper, lower half, and right and left. And that's how I do. Alright guys, quick little intermission here. I took a little fiver, went and had some lunch, and came back and... Uh, had a second look at this. Now, one of the things me and the client talked about was having the sort of war paint, the blood that's going from this guy, crossing over, and hitting this dude in the back. Kind of connecting the two. You know what? Some of these little guys that I painted are totally getting in the way, guys. It ain't gonna work. Uh, this guy's gotta go, and this guy's gotta be moved. Uh, it's just giving too much definition to the top of this head, which is going to mess up with my crossover. So, before I get too far into it, I'm going to erase a couple of these guys, and you may as well come along for the ride. I don't hide nothing from you guys. <laughs> Check it out. Let my fail be a lesson to you. Alright guys, so first thing I'm going to do is just take some of that cleaning slash thinning solution that I love to talk about my fantastic handy dandy mixing slash cutting slash I don't even know slicing dicing chops your vegetables grills your meat does it all but I actually don't eat that stuff because it's totally toxic um <laughs> yeah so clean it off with the fantastic and then we're gonna have to sand her down because that paint does get into that little bit of grooves it kind of dyes the surface. So start off slowly, guys. And we're going to do this dry at first, just so we don't make a huge mess. Now we're going to speed up a little bit. And then uh, proceed into full-on orbital power sander mode. And totally bang this off right quick. And again, with a damp cloth, we're just going to wipe her down carefully. Don't want to backtrack too much and have a good look over it. And well, I can still see hints of it, guys. So, round two, sand her down one more time. And then, once you're happy with that, guys, just a drop of your cleaning solution, your thinning solution, the fantastic solution that we touched on in the hack video of all. And what do you guys think? I'd say that's problem solved. And now let's map out this blood quickly before we get any further on these little skulls. And working with these stencils over these dual curvatures, guys, well, it can be uh, fun to say the least, but more realistically, it can be quite cumbersome. So. Don't rush. Take your time. Um, I know I'm just kind of holding my stencil in place, but if you feel more apt to tape it down, do so. Um, I'm trying to make a dollar, <laughs> so I'm trying to do this as quick as possible. And that, again, sometimes has its own problems. <laughs> but so far, so far, so good. So, on to the other side. Now... I'm going to map out the lower portion because I know where that's going to sit on the cheeks. I'm going to map out the eyebrows. But the rest of this is going to have to change. Um, the curves that I got going on these streaks are not going to come anywhere near joining up with the other guys. So I'm going to pull some... Uh, airbrushing sleight of hand as it were some magic well not really but as I was saying guys this crossover is pretty important to this piece so what I'm gonna have to do here guys is I'm actually using the left portion of the skull the bloodstream on the right that has the curve that I need and then I flip the stencil all the way over 
to get me the other side so that now I've got a nice crossover that meets and all I've got to do is quickly go on in here guys and just do a couple little highlights here and there just to make sure that I've got the full on convergence having that collision of blood at the crossroads there the cross section right there in my crosshairs all right i think that's enough cross references I can cross that off my bucket list <laughs> all right back to work and we can get back to these little skulls now i kind of know the areas i need to stay away from so we can get this guy back on there much as he was done before kind of building it up in the central area and then darkening out chiseling out my darks and again before i get too far ahead of myself guys i'm just finishing up that cheekbone on the big skull on the front of the helmet just to make sure that none of my skulls my little skulls skull skull skulls <laughs> i know there's a bunch of them but just to make sure the little skulls don't uh, get in the way of what I'm trying to have happen here. Because I do want him to fade in the background. And if I got a skull in the wrong area, then it looks like the small skull is in the foreground if it's over top of him. And that's not what I want. I want the skulls to be in the background. So now I'm taking extra time just to make sure that I have it all mapped out. Because I don't want to go ahead and erase any more skulls. That was already two steps backwards. But I digress. Um, consider the rant over. <laughs> and we're gonna get back to work. Paint some more skulls. And now with these guys, I did bring my sketch up close. So I've got an idea of what I'm trying to lay down here, guys. But again, I've done enough of these skulls over the years that... Well, it's not rocket science. What I'm doing here, I know where kind of my brightest areas are. My teeth, my brow ridges and my nose ridges and I just sort of play off of those and then going with crazy elongated open mouths here guys yeah I don't know I think it just adds to the effect of these sort of uh lost souls screaming skulls the little victims of these uh torturous twins of terror Whoa. And uh, you can see guys just building up these skulls. I've uh, mixed up a new white here so it's a little bit thicker. I probably should have taken the time to make sure it was mixed a little bit better in the cup. And this harkens back to earlier in the video where I was saying how the consistency of this paint can kind of change throughout the spraying process. Well, here's one example. Now you can hear me kind of clean up my tip and you can hear me pinch and let some air kind of kick back and recirculate through that cup and it helps mix up that paint a little bit better and now I'm getting a little bit more of a thinner paint it's not so thick not so bright I can punch in these little eyeballs quite easily man on to the next and I'm not looking for full-on perfection here I'm just mapping it out so I know where everything is. We'll get in with some blacks in the next one, guys. And we can really start chiseling these dudes out a little bit better. And then we'll start knocking them into the background. But this is pretty much how I do. Skulls on the fly. Quick and easy. So easy, in fact. Here's me doing one upside down. <laughs> I've done so many skulls, guys. I'm actually kind of amazed that my dreams aren't just, like, laden with skulls. Because, I mean, 90% of what I do is skulls. But maybe it's the fact that I get to, like, plow, spew them all out all over the place that they don't build up in the psyche. But you also think you do this day in, day out. <laughs> and it's got to it's gotta settle in there somewhere. Or maybe, just maybe, I've subconsciously tuned them out, trying to inadvertently protect myself from such hellish nightmares. Possibly. 
Nah, it can't be too deep in there, man. This stuff flows way too easily. I, it's just got to be that. I, I spend so much time spewing it out in real life that there's no reason for me to uh, have any kind of nightmares. It's a sheltered existence. <laughs> Alright, guys. So, last couple skulls here. We'll do a little bit more real time. Kind of see how I build some of these guys up. Nothing too overly complicated, I don't think. And as you can see, typical airbrush maneuvering. Using that brush close up for some of the finer details. And pulling her back for some of the blends and the fades. And there she be, guys. These bad boys are all mapped out. Alright guys, we're going to call that one a wrap for today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. Uh, as always, guys, I love to hear your comments, so feel free to tip-tap-tap tap all those down into the comment section. And uh, stay tuned for next one, guys. We'll get into some detail work and really start to chisel out these skulls. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. As always, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Could it do without you? Cheers. Man, if you haven't heard, the new Bloodshot uniforms are available for purchase. Swing on by the shop and check those out. There's a link in the description. And don't forget, guys, beginners videos, airbrushing hacks, and plenty of tutorials. You know how we do. Cheers.